part three of the Buzz Bubble with Rich Silverstein. Now back to our host, Kevin Kelly, on the Buzz Bubble. ABC Integration, I, I was another one of the testimonials that were on your site. Um, Chief Marketing Officer at Pepsi, you guys are working on Propel, right? And she had said, you guys are great to work with, it's like family, and you work with all the different players and all the other agencies well. That's a kind of an interesting subject that I get different answers wherever I go. I I think the audio you heard was a woman from Pepsi connected with Frito-Lay. Oh, okay. It could be, she because she was really adventuresome on changing the way they, they market, and we do a lot of internet work. So the, the, the original Hotel 626, oh, yeah. that would not have happened without a client that wanted it. Yeah, that's a great uh, how many agencies, site and... Oh, it's amazing. And how many clients, no, how many agencies have had great ideas but they haven't been able to sell them because the client All wasn't willing to buy it? <laughs> In this case, they were willing to buy it. So it was a perfect storm of they wanted to change the way they market, we wanted to show our power on the internet and that's a per perfect example of taking what we know how to do, storytelling and craft, and put it to, to the internet. No, it's a fantastic uh, site. You have the crazy stats, like people stay on 20 minutes, and it, it's and then unbelievable. They die. And then they're dead, and then their friends, they've got to sacrifice a friend to get out. No, I, I know. <laughs> you know I would, I would, one side of me says, get a life, but I'm glad they're on it. Yeah. Boy. Integration. So what do you I mean know. by integration? Well, working with other agencies on a brand, you've got to get, oh. is it just getting stuff? Is it just, oh. are you really working on oh. It's theory, never or, easy. You know? Integration is never easy. It's just not. Because you're asking the New York Giants to play ball with the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> together to beat the Redskins? Just give me your playbook for a few days. We've got to work on this <laughs> thing. and You know, because <laughs> agencies have cultures. Yeah. And we are... I love to say we are ball teams, and you know, at every, any given time, we have rookies, and we have the old guard, and we have the, the, the mid-level, and we have coaches, and we all want to win. And the 49ers used to win every year, but they don't win every year now. I'm old enough for that one, yeah. yeah. That's been a while. I mean, it's been a while, but that was <laughs> everything lined up. Perfect yeah. management, perfect team, perfect, uh, perfect perfect coach, uh, perfect quarterback. You don't always have that, but you strive for it. And integration, what we like to do is lead other people, and we will work with anybody. We work with other agencies, we work with clients, in even difficult times and sometimes ridiculously difficult times. <laughs> and because we're realists, we, we, we're nice people, we try to listen really hard to their problems, and we actually are respectful to the other agencies. It's just not perfect yeah. because... It's not the Pro Bowl in Hawaii where everybody just wears helmets and they're all giving nah, each other hugs. it's not. It's yeah. not. So okay. I'm not sure about integration. It's, uh, I prefer that it didn't happen. <laughs> I prefer that we lost the account to one agency that did it all. Mm. Okay, I, well, that's a good question. Yeah. So yeah. the idea of uh, a single agency owning a brand I as opposed to... I believe a single to... agency is the way to go because then your head is on the chopping block. It's your... You have to make it happen. And we are here to serve the client, and there isn't an agency in the world that doesn't care. No, it's not about. But I mean, three short years ago, you may not have had a fully loaded digital department here. You know what I mean? People have to go to this, used to have to go to the specialist. Now everybody's oh, bringing it in house. Oh, oh, oh. So they'd have their interactive agency, they'd have their experiential, and they'd have their agency oh, of but, record. And but there's a very big difference there. If we get to pick the digital agency to work with us, no problem. Oh, that's right. no as a problem. vendor relationship, sure. As a vendor relationship or a partner. Right. Started a kind of partner vendor. But when the client goes and picks the dad company and sure. that company says, now you're going to work together, it's, I don't it's think it's not, the best. No, yeah. I don't think it's no, the best. No, nobody's told a good story about it. No. <laughs> I mean, funny. I don't think that RGA and Widening Kennedy. That was my, going to go to that example. <laughs> love each other. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, nothing more to be said on that. Okay. <laughs> You mentioned something that I talk about a lot with people and I get different answers and some of them are real and some of them I don't think are real. The idea of selling work, you know, you, you, getting a client to buy into something that, <laughs> you know, and I, no, we never sell work. Um, well, what do you want to call it? You know, you need to get your ideas accepted 
what is that uh, process really, called and how does it go? Well, I don't know any agency that doesn't sell work. I don't know how you would do it any other way. Yeah. Um, it's not a perfect world. You're trying to sell something artful to an industry. The industry's problem is I got to sell a lot of widgets. They're not thinking of it being artful. Few people are, but mostly. They have to sell widgets. You want to sell it artfully. Why do you want to sell it artfully? One, because we, we think we're treating the consumer with respect that they can handle it being artful. It also keeps, we, we bring in talent. It keeps us interesting. And I think it works. I actually think it cuts through. First of all, you said it happens, which is finally. You know, everybody's, oh, we don't sell work. We have a discussion. It was all. No, no, you know. sell work. We, we sell work. We sell it respectfully. We don't yeah. sell it. Uh, if they don't want it, they don't get it. Uh, right, right. We can show our frustration, but we also show our listening. If a client explains why they don't want it for uh, very clearly, we go, you're right. Yeah. Okay, we'll give you a new idea. If the client pushes their agenda, when I mean that, they tell us how to do it. Yeah. It doesn't work well. Right. If they say, this is my problem, we help solve it. Right. And then we present it and they go, you know, but if you did this and this and you go, hey, you're right. Just, just be honest with us. Right. In fact, tell us you hate it and tell us why you hate it because the why you hate it will help us fix it. Right. It's pretty simple. Yeah. It's not brain surgery. So it is collaborative in that sense, but it's not, you know, you go in and I tell my people, I said, you come to me, you got to sell me your idea. And I'm sure you do the same thing. If somebody comes to you and you're like, yeah, that's dumb. You kill it. And they're like, you kind of would love to see them fight for it if it really means enough. Well, I think I learned this from Hal Reine because I expected, I went to working at Hal Reine. Oh my God, we'll do anything we want. And then I realized in the meeting, he didn't even try to sell something hard that, that we were trying to sell. Because he sensed if they didn't want it, he wasn't going to sell it to them. Mm. And I think a lot of young people come here and they think, well, Rich and Jeff, well, they'll sell it. I can't. I can't sell work they don't want. Right, right. Finally, we get that answer. <laughs> Not to jump back, but I want to jump back um, just a quickie about Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, there was yeah. a lot of swirling talk about not necessarily your spots, anybody else's spots, but there were spots that were crowdsourced, ideas, and that was swirling around the internet that like, oh, all these spots were you know, sent out to the crowd and people came up with ideas and submitted them. Oh. You know, really? I don't know, yeah, did any of that I never come heard, across your radar? Honest to God, I never even heard that concept. That's what people did? That's what I heard. Yeah, it was a lot, you know, you guys, well, were, you guys were the only ones with spots on the TV, I, so. I also heard there were penises in the ice cubes a long time ago, but they're not. They're not, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, I remember think, those. I think there's I no magic. I study in art school. Yeah, I remember. See? Yeah. That's a and if you there. say sex, they'll buy it. Uh, right. Well, mm, not, not necessarily. But, um, <laughs> no, well, I don't. That our train of thought. Uh, okay, there is that whole area, and we've been part of it with Frito-Lay, where where we've asked the consumer to go make their own commercials. Right. And a lot of them uh, have looked at how commercials are made and what sells, like throw something in the nuts. Okay. Right. But we didn't crowdsource that. That is just someone going out going, hmm, now if you do this and there's the arc of the commercial and have a little joke at the end, uh, um, uh, Bud Light, yeah. <laughs> people like it. Right. Now, not all commercials should be like Bud Light. You know, they carved out a certain style and identity for a while, and you know, I'm not going to sell that to HP. They're not going to buy it. Right. Um, so I don't know about this crowdsourcing. I think the bigger idea is that you do something remarkable, and it is seen uh, 15 times fold, 100 times fold than the one time on the Super Bowl. It's right beyond that. your media buy. Yeah. Oh it yeah. Never okay. Commercials never die anymore. They just never die. No. If they're a good commercial, they're recycled, they're on TV shows, they're on YouTube. People make fun of them, make their own commercial. It's amazing. Right. Uh, Did you guys slip one out before? Because uh, well, it was always like, hold on to it until the game. Um, Agencies were like, you know, and it worked. Like, you know, people were getting work. 15 million views before. Yeah, the game. I noticed, well, I noticed that, uh, you know, Volkswagen slipped out the little boy way early and that's one way to do it our, a lot most of our clients don't want to do that they right. want to wait for the big bang on the super bowl there's something to slipping it out <laughs> it starts you to get ball some rolling. PR, well you know they were saying it's people are so hungry for stuff to talk about before the game that leads exactly. up to they're like oh, yeah. the biggest <laughs> mistake a client makes is they go we're going to be in the super bowl but we're going to do a traditional spot to tell people who we are and it really bombs yeah. which is well people have expectations 
Yeah, try to tell that. They don't want to an informational clients. spot on the Super Bowl. No, they don't. Because you're sandwiched between. You know, I look at, I look at some of the placement too. You know, the way they line these things up. I'm like, oh man, did they know that was going to be between this and this? Because well, some well that doesn't work exactly. <laughs> but I mean, the first, the first three to five spots, people are really paying attention. Mm -hmm. And then, then it, you know, then it depends on the game. But um, I tell you what, they really have to change, halftime. Whoa, it's bad. <laughs> Well, it brings us all down. Well, but, uh, Maybe there has to be Black a break. Black Eyed Peas, right? That was what it was this year? Yes, it was. My, you know, I, usually it's at my house, and they were all you know, watching. But you know, there was, we were waving goodbye to like a third of our crowd. You know, but, oh, good to see you. But I don't think what they realize, there's no voting. There's no, the spots are not viewed at halftime. They're not oh, part. Oh, halftime spots, yeah. Halftime spots are not part of the. I'm peeing, I'm refilling the, the dip, yeah. And so they don't get, well, they're actually cheaper and whatever, but um, actually, I don't like halftime, but whatever. I don't know. I like but that the main hey, shorter. There's going to be, is there going to be an NFL this year? Is there going to be a. Oh, uh, well, uh, yeah. Is there going to be a Super Bowl? Will they learn from hockey? Will they learn from. You know what we should do? Hockey never recovered. Hockey, what, they take a whole season off. Nobody gives a Nobody cares. crap anymore. If there is no football, we should just have the Super Bowl for commercials. <sighs> that would be cool. Wouldn't that be great? Let's have, let's and have. And halftime, let's they do can a play. bracket. Let's do AFC, NFC. You guys could be, you know, the West Coast, and we'll come up, you know, we'll, we'll have a let's whole do that. agency. And at halftime, we'll have a flag football game. <laughs> and we'll have all the agencies make commercials, and they'll play, uh, and then at halftime we play football. No. That okay. would be cool. Let's do that. All right. Okay. All right, I'll get you a brief on that on Thursday. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for part three of the Buzz Bubble with Rich Silverstein. See what's coming up next week in part four. I'm creating the, the imagery for the, for the Golden Gate Bridge anniversary, and there is not too many. There's the pyramids, okay? There's the Golden Gate Bridge. There's Hoover Dam. There's, I mean, there's certain things you go, oh my God, man built that. Um, and I love things that are, uh, of substance. Next week on the Buzz Bubble.